Welcome to Not Factory Approved. Thanks for coming back. Uh, the site where I show you how to repair, rebuild, restore, or build many different things. Uh, a wide range of various projects. Some work, some don't. Thanks for watching. One thing that uh, the old Cadillac has is a vacuum operated windshield washer. I wondered how it could possibly work since it didn't have any pump that I could see. Well, it turns out I was missing some bits. A fellow member of the Cadillac Club uh, shared this photo of his with me and uh, gave me a schematic of what was inside. It, this tube picks up the washer fluid. The vacuum pulls up the diaphragm inside um, with a ball stop, a check valve, and then there's a spring. Once you release the vacuum, it pushes the diaphragm back down and squirts the fluid out. So that's very handy. I was expecting a pump it was actually just uh, priming a cavity and pushing it out the other side. So this diaphragm that was in here originally is very hard and uh, has a big hole in it and rips quite easily. So I'm trying to form this 1 16th rubber neoprene fit down inside here. What I've found is I'll use heat and then a little spray can without the cap and without any stock sticking out and that will form part of it and then the other part um, I will form on top of uh, possibly this or on top of this bottom of the diaphragm. I've got this apart with a small screwdriver. I'm just carefully prying it out bit by bit until it was clear and would allow me to remove the cap, brush the rust out of it. And the cat wants attention. Life is full of major decisions. Uh, this is the original bracket for mounting the vacuum operated windshield washer in the Cadillac. I found this Adams peanut butter jar which happens to fit and then there's a strap that goes around underneath to hold it up and a rubber seal around the top. Problem is that this cap is completely shot. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I would like to find another lid. The actual one that goes with the jar might just have to buy a big jar of peanut butter. Another temptation is that I think this is from about a 54 or 55 vacuum operated as well windshield washer. It has an actual pump inside. It's driven by vacuum. So I'm half tempted to use that. And it is a bigger jar. It holds more washer fluid, but then it won't be original or a little further original than Adam's peanut butter. Ah, uh, scratch the head. What to do? I made a decision regarding the uh, windshield washer for the Cadillac. Rather than rebuilding one that's from around a 54-55, I'm going to stick with the one as closest as possible to net to uh, original. And that's this diaphragm operated one. The, the uh, 5455 one needed um, a lot of work as well. So I thought, why put all that work into one that is not original? So I'm working on this one. With this, I've sealed off the bottom that way. That's the plan. This is the bottom cup for the spring. It sits in here. The spring goes on top of it. That. This is sitting a little high, so I'm going to take that out again and reduce the size, the thickness of that. I'm going to have to find some way of protecting this diaphragm so that when it comes down, it's not getting uh, pinched. First thing I did was to heat this and stretch it out wearing gloves because it is fairly warm and stretch out the middle. And then when I finished doing that, 
I used the paint can to stretch it over the top, more heat. And then I use this. I don't have to be, I can't use that anymore. It's starting to leave a little dent here. I'm afraid it's going to create a hole. The valve sticks up just enough, or the orifice, I mean, sticks up just enough. So I will continue a little bit more, but it's getting a lot closer. Not too much more to go. And then I will attempt to put this uh, together after I fit a one-way valve to the bottom. The last bit of forming I did is to heat it up and use one end over top of the other. Why didn't I think of that before? And then that stretches it down. So I'll give it one more treatment and I think it probably will be sufficient. Here goes. And hold it down like that. Let it cool a bit. What I've done now is these uh, filings prove it. I filed this down to roughly half of the thickness it was before, rounded the edges, domed the top of it, uh, took a drill bit and removed the burrs that were inside there. So hopefully this will now have minimal effect on the diaphragm when it's sitting with the spring against it. I might be doing this again in the future, but try this part. That goes back in there and uh, start putting it back together. I put it together. Uh, I've given it a little bit more heat. And so the spring is inside pulling on the diaphragm. I've given it a bit of heat to stretch it out. And I've pulled it through as best I can to try and make sure there's no wrinkles. And clamped it up. And it's not real tight. So I don't want uh, to cut anything yet. And I see it's spread a little bit at the bottom, so I'll straighten that out, but uh, it should work. Here's the first part of the setup, the Teflon block. I painted it with etching primer and some black enamel. I'll paint the whole thing after it's all assembled. Now this is a one-way valve, which will go on the other side of this to hold it together. Here's the outlet. There's a ball bearing and a spring in there, one-way valve here as well, and then inside a rubber washer, some oil sealant, uh, that should be compatible with the um, windshield washer fluid, and let it set up, and I'll finish assembling it. And that will look original anyway, or close to it. So I've put it together initially, to trim this diaphragm off and then finish crimping it around using this body hammer once it's in the vise firmly and now I'll put this part together I trimmed out all the old rot on that one because it's way too thin to uh, weld so this will go in here that mounts on there riveted together with a rubber seal. I'll do that, put it on the bottle, and then hook up the vacuum pump and see if it actually works. This is how it looks so far. I haven't checked to see if it works yet or not. But the uh, fill lid moves, rotates nicely. It's all put together. I've hammered this down uh, gently and repeatedly. Try and crimp it over the edge and get it into the same shape it was in before. The difference now is that the rubber is crimped in there. Uh, since I don't have a preformed diaphragm and have to use stretch rubber to get in there, a nitrile sheet. So uh, the easiest way was to pull it through, clamp it together, crimp this down a bit, and then trim off the edges. We'll see how that does. It's all together. It's got the spring inside. And we'll check it with the vacuum pump. I was trying to use this vacuum pump to drive that windshield washer pump to make sure it worked. This vacuum pump is pretty anemic. 
and that's why the corrosion on the ports from being in storage. So I'll have to clean that, clean that, take the head off here and clean the one underneath as well. I will uh, put a better uh, fitting on there. I'll have to pick one up. But that's about the size of the line. Hello. Hi. Oh, I did Did you? Yeah. The adjustment of this nut, the fitting, put the pressure on the spring and the ball bearing, the one-way valve, it seems to be critical. But it's working better. and get a little better than that. There you go. Older than I am. Brought back to life. Now I just have to paint it. Get that fitting. And uh, possibly get a better spring. This is Cookie the cat. Not our cat. She comes in here every once in a while to see if there's any mice around and to get padded. I'm not a cat person, but you're okay, Cookie. So when you hear the plaintiff meows in the background, that's Cookie. I'll show you how it works without the valve in there. Got to do some refining on the valve yet. Suction. A little bit more pressure. And flow. This is the base I'm making for the windshield washer. Like that. We'll have straps that will come up to here. And here. Hold it in place. The jar only has to come off if you want to clean it. Uh, it can be filled without removing it. But this is, I'm using aluminum. Aluminum and steel don't mix. So I'm going to file this down with a coarse file, round it off, even it up, and then I will use a wire brush and remove all the aluminum that gets stuck in here. I'm not going to use the grinder, any grinder disc or wheel because I don't want this embedded in the material and it's very hard to remove. It also creates problems when you're grinding things like steel and can actually, if you have enough heat buildup, it can actually fracture the disc, which is extremely dangerous. You can see some of the aluminum now is stuck in the file. I'm going in one direction this way, not like that. This it off and then those can be removed with a wire brush. Some will be more stuck than others. So it's good to clean it out every once in a while. Every few There's also a special brush that's very stiff and short bristles for removing metal filings from a file. I don't have one, but they're not hard to get. I've marked with holes where I want them, drilled them out, countersunk them slightly with a larger drill bit, um, cleaned off the scale, most of it anyway, with grease there, I see, and then I will put etching primer on it. Because it's aluminum, it will not take uh, regular paint very well.
and the flat portion is because that's going against the firewall. I just didn't want to scratch any more than I had to. And the paint is dried. I have this leftover rubber piece which I will use to protect the bottom of the glass. slightly over a right angle to try and grab onto that. I'll try the acorn nuts first. In. There. That should work. Apparently this has to bend. That seems to be okay. Tighten it up a bit. I will align this a little better, but that's the idea. And these are stainless steel. Those won't corrode. There are any pictures I can find, that's where it sits. I have a little bit of wiring to straighten out because it's uh, apparently I had them exiting the wrong ports and uh, not directed in the right manner. So I'll straighten that up and I'll show you the final result. But there it is. One seventy year old, roughly, washer system. Success, I'd say. Sitting in there, I've uh, found out I was routing the, routing the wires the way that it says in a 42 manual. Apparently 47 is different. So there it is. Rewired. Uh, wire routing has changed. Just have to hook up the oil line for the oil pressure gauge. Then the lines for the uh, actual washer fluid and it should be all done.